Gillian Keegan, who I think is still waiting for us to all thank her for the job she does while we all sit on our backside, has today announced uh, a consultation on these minimum service levels in education. She says that she's been having discussions with unions but not been able to make much progress. I wonder who's at fault for that. But yeah, this for me, and I've not looked into what the suggestion, but this for me, on the surface of it, is just a, the government's way of trying to silence teachers, trying to make sure teachers can no longer stand up and kick off a fuss about these absolute grifters decimating the profession we know and love. I've been waiting 13 years for a minimum service level of our government. The whole point of a strike is to disrupt is to draw people's attention to the job we are doing and show how integral that is and how the impact it has on everything else. Hence why demands need to be met, otherwise this is what would happen. You can apply that to any strike, whether it's train strikes, NHS or education. The education strikes last year, I said over and over again, it is not just about pay. It was just always made out by people like Gillian and the government and a lot of the media that the strikes was just about an increase in pay. And don't get me wrong, pay was important. But you ask most teachers, the strikes last year was a cry for help to try and save and salvage the education system, which is hanging on by a thread and is no longer sustainable unless there is vast investment and support. This sort of idea for me is just a way of making sure teachers no longer have a voice and can no longer stand up and speak against what's been what the government are doing to education. You know, Gillian can come out with all these weird statistics about 25 million cumulative data. I mean, this is sort of the same maths they probably used when they made the mistake about the budget. I mean, the hypocrisy when she tweets stuff like this saying that, yeah, it's fine to strike. But we've got to balance that with a child's right to receive an education. The reason we were striking is because the government have completely wrecked education. Also find this funny, brings us in line with countries like France, Italy and Spain. Hang on a second. Didn't we vote for independence so we don't have to be like these countries anymore? In My door is always open to further discussions. Is there no self-reflection here? Was this not the same education secretary that refused to engage with the unions Hence why the strikes actually happened. Because no teacher wanted to strike. It was the absolute last resort. Because the government just would not engage. If you're a parent reading this sort of stuff, agreeing with it, thinking this is a step in the right direction, this is going to have a positive impact. Well done, you've been well and truly torrid. Which means you've been hoodwinked into believing that the blame lies with the teachers who are in the classroom doing the job. When so much has nothing to do with teachers. If you're wondering why there are hardly any teachers in your children's school, why your children might have multiple teachers a year, when 40,000 teachers left the profession last year, exclude anyone who retired, these are the people you need to blame. If you are wondering why half of all secondary school maths lessons are being taught by non-specialist maths teachers, this is who you've got to blame. If you're wondering why nearly 60% of teachers are seriously considering leaving the profession, this is who you need to blame. If you are wondering why all of the fundraisers and own clothes day at school are raising money to get resources for the school, this is who you need to blame. If you are wondering why your child's school building is crumbling around them, this is who you have to blame. Now, if you're a parent of a child with additional needs and wondering why the support, resources, provision just isn't there in the school, this is who you have to blame. And the strikes last year, for the vast majority, most if not all teachers who striked, was about standing up to solve all of those problems, not just the pay. But by bringing in these minimum service level ideas when teachers decide to strike, it's just a way to deflect attention from f people pointing fingers at those in power. And the thing to remember is, if the government adequately funded, supported, valued teachers and the education system, there wouldn't ever be any strikes. And if the government cared, 
and actually thought about it, they'd realise by supporting, valuing and investing in education, that would then provide a lot of solutions to a lot of other problems within our society.